Welcome to Lecture 2 on Civil Rights. At the end of the Civil War, full citizenship seemed to be granted to Af African Americans with the adoption of the Civil Rights Amendments, beginning with the 13th Amendment that abolished slavery. However, for Civil Rights Movement, the most important amendment was yet to come. In June 1866, Congress submitted the 14th Amendment to the states. It states, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. This portion was a direct response to the court's decision in Dred Scott. Continuing, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens without due process of the law nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. This truly radical measure granted blacks political rights and in doing so expanded the power of the federal government at the expense of the states. In addition, it broadened the definition of citizenship and struck at discriminatory legislation such as the black codes by guaranteeing all citizens due process and equal protection of the law. It attempted to force southern states to permit blacks to vote, those states that did not face a reduction of their congressional representation. The amendment also barred former federal officials who had served the Confederacy from holding state or federal office unless they received a pardon from Congress. In 1868, the Republican candidate for president, Grant, defeated the Democratic nominee Horatio Seymour. Southern blacks enfranchised under the Reconstruction Acts provided Grant's narrow margin of victory in the popular vote. The 14th Amendment and Reconstruction Acts enabled Southern blacks to vote, but the radicals in, in Congress wanted to guarantee African American men the right in all states, despite the unpopularity of the idea in the North. Congress thus passed the 15th Amendment, which forbade states to deny the right to vote on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. This amendment became part of the Constitution in March 1870. Spurred on by Southern recalcitrants, Congressional Republicans rejected President Johnson's Reconstruction Plan. The Republicans won veto-proof majorities in both houses of Congress and control of all the northern state governments. The refusal of southern states to accept the 14th Amendment led to the passage of Johnson's, over Johnson's veto of the first Reconstruction Act in March 1867. This law divided the South into five military districts, each commanded by a military officer with the extensive powers to protect the civil rights of all persons and to maintain order. To end military rule, states had to adopt new constitutions that both guaranteed blacks the right to vote and disenfranchised many ex-Confederates. The new state governments also had to ratify the 14th Amendment. Congress eventually passed two more Reconstruction Acts to tighten and clarify these procedures. During Reconstruction, former slaves had real political influence. They voted, held office, and exercised the rights guaranteed to them by the 14th Amendment. In 1876, the Republicans nominated Rutherford B. Hayes, and the Democrats chose Samuel J. Tilden to run for president. Early election returns indicated that Tilden led. In Florida, South Carolina, and Louisiana, where Republican regimes still held power, they used their control of the election machinery to invalidate Democratic votes and declare Hayes the winner in those states. In January 1877, Congress created an electoral commission to decide the disputed election. The Republican majority on the commission awarded all the disputed votes to Hayes. Many Southern Democrats were willing to accept Hayes if he would promise to remove federal troops from the South and allow the southern states to manage their own internal affairs. Once in office, Hayes honored most elements of the compromise. He removed the last troops from South Carolina and Louisiana in 18, 
1877. The compromise of 1877 thus marked the end of the Reconstruction era. Even after formerly enslaved men won the right to vote with the passage of the 15th Amendment, most politicians in both parties still rejected appeals for women's suffrage. At the state level, a referendum in 1867 to give women the vote in Kansas failed. In 1872, Susan B. Anthony and several other women were arrested in Rochester, New York for illegally registering and voting in that year's election. Judge Ward Hunt assessed Anthony a fine of $100, but did not sentence her to jail. Anthony subsequently refused to pay the fine. In 1875, Congress passed the Civil Rights Act. It was intended to protect African Americans from discrimination in public accommodations. The law, unfortunately, was later declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court in an eight to one decision. They stated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment does not give the federal government the power to prohibit discrimination by private individuals nor did the 13th Amendment prohibit racial discrimination in public accommodations. This eventually led to a court case called Plessy v. Ferguson, which is probably the second worst Supreme Court decision in its history. The court ruled 7-1 to that the 14th Amendment or the Equal Protection of the Laws Clause was not violated by racial distinction and facilities were equal. Justin Harlan, the lone dissent, predicted that this decision would cause an all-out assault on African Americans' rights. It has essentially established the doctrine of separate but equal rule. This rule prevailed throughout the mid-20th century. Now, all southern states and even some northern states erected what was known as a Jim Crow system. This is a system of laws that was adopted to criminalize things like interracial marriage, to expand segregation of public places, and to discriminate against African Americans. The Jim Crow system provoked organized efforts against it. Beginning during World War I and continuing to after World War II, African Americans began to migrate to northern cities to seek jobs in the war factories. Better employment led to social gains and an increase in the African-American vote. African-American middle class opposed segregation and began to gain the political clout to challenge it. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or the NAACP, was created. It sought to win political rights through political pressure campaigns and litigation. It was critical to the 1950 civil rights movement and the shifting political party allegiances. Women's organizations continue to fight for the right to vote. Some states granted women the right to vote before the federal government did. Wyoming first granted women the right to vote in 1890. Colorado, Utah, and Idaho followed next. It's important to know that they could only vote in state and local elections and not federal elections. Now, other groups like the National American Women's Suffrage Association staged meetings, parades, petitions, and protests. They helped win passage and ratification of the 19th Amendment. The National Women's Party picketed and got arrested in front of the White House after protesting President Wilson's opposition to the suffrage amendment. The 19th Amendment, ratified in 1920, thus guaranteed women the right to vote. We'll end lecture two there.